welcome to Sri Satyasai Loka Seva Gurukulam online classes. We've been learning differentiation. So in our previous videos, we've learned how to differentiate algebraic functions. Now we are moving on to the next type that is differentiation of trigonometric functions. So let's quickly move on without further delay. So every time we first, before we start using the formulae, we try to differentiate using our first principle. To give you a recap of the first principle, dy by dx is equal to limit del x tending to 0, del y by del x is equal to f of x plus del x minus f of x y del x. In case you have any doubts in understanding this, go back to our previous videos, learn it properly, make notes and then get back. So today, we are going to see how to differentiate trigonometric functions. So to start with, let's see what do we get when we, when we differentiate sine x. So let's consider the function sine x. Let's take y is equal to sin x and see how are we going to differentiate and what is the derivative of sin x by the first principle. So let's consider a small increment of del x in x. So this will obviously impact the y value. So sine of x plus del x, let's consider it as y plus del y. There's a small increment to y value also when we increment the x value. Now, what is del y? Del y, you can get by subtracting 1 from 2. So, 1 from 2. So, when I subtract y plus del y minus y, I get the del y value on my left hand side and my right hand side will be sine of x plus del x minus sin x. So what is this equal to? We all know that sin c minus sin d. I'm sure you would have learned this in trigonometric functions. This identity gives you 2 cos of c plus d by 2 into sine of c minus d by 2. Now what is our c? Here this is our c and this is our d. So this will be transformed into 2 cos of c that is x plus del x plus d x by 2 into sine of c minus d. My c is x plus del x minus d is x by 2. So here this x, this x gets cancelled. I get sine of x by 2, del x by 2, sorry. That is what is here. And here my x and x becomes 2x. So this I can be writing it as cos of 2x plus del x by 2, which is split as two fractions. So 2x by 2 gives me x plus del x by 2 is here. I hope you all understand. So, I have, we have used this identity to write it as a product of two trigonometric functions. So, sin c minus sin d is the identity that we have used here. Now, I am supposed to find del x by del y by del x, right? For me to find the dy by dx. So, what do I do? I have to divide this by del x for me to find del y by del x, right? So del y by del x is equal to this whole thing divided by del x or I can write it as this, putting this del x here alone because these two are getting multiplied to each other. Now, what is my dy by dx? My dy by dx will be limit del x tending to 0, this. 
So, here limit del x tending to 0 on this one. So, this is a product of, for, of two functions. So, this limit applies to this into this. I am sure you all will remember the limits and continuity chapter. We have learned how to evaluate limits. In case you have doubts, please do go back to those videos to visit how to evaluate limits, understand and then get back. These are very, very important concepts for you to solve the limits. Now, we know that limit x tending to 0 sin x by x is 1. If you apply the limits as it is, what happens is this will lead you to an indeterminate form. So, you should know this for you to evaluate the limit. Now, what do we do? This 2, we will take it here. I am taking this onto the denominator's denominator. It is as good as multiplying here or taking it onto the denominator of the denominator. I am sure you all will know it. So, now, this is of this form sin x by x the angle by the same angle on the denominator here the angle is del x by 2 the same value on the denominator so this when applied limit del x tending to 0 is going to give me 1 right yes this is going to give me 1 and what is this going to give me when i apply del x tends to 0 so, when my del x is tending to 0, this term becomes 0 and I will get cos x here and I will get 1 here. So, my limit del x tends to 0, my del y by del x, that is nothing but my dy by dx, wherein my y is sin x, correct? So, this implies d sin x by dx is cos x. So, when I differentiate sin x, I am getting cos x, right? So, every time to use the first principle and derive the derivatives is going to be a little complicated. When we do application based questions, when you are asked to find the derivative, you can use if you know use the derivatives if you know them. So let's quickly list down the derivatives of every trigonometric ratio so that it's easy for you to apply. Now we have six ratios that is sin x, cos x, tan x, secant x, cosecant x, cot x. Now, derivative of sin x is equal to minus cos x. Derivative of cos x with respect to x is minus sin x. Derivative of tan x with respect to x is secant square x. And derivative of secant x with respect to x is secant x tan x. So, derivative of cosecant x with respect to x is minus cosecant x cot x and derivative of cot x with respect to x is minus cosecant square x. So, these formulas are very, very important. Pause the video and make a note of it so that we can apply it as and when we solve the problems. So, the question says find the derivative from principle from the first principle of the following function with respect to x. So, now we are supposed to use the first principle to solve it. So, we cannot directly use the formula here because we do not have a choice. The question says use the first principle. So, let us quickly see how to do that. So, let y be equal to root sin x. We know that dy by dx is equal to limit del y tending to 0, del y by del x is equal to f of x plus del x minus f of x by del x, right? Okay. So, let us find out one by one. 
Why is this? Let us name it 1. Now we need to find del y. So we are going to increment x here, del x. So we have root of sine of x plus del x, which is going to increase the y by del y. So name this as 2. Now we are supposed to find del y. So that can be got by subtracting 2 and 1. So we have del y is equal to root of sine of x plus del x minus root sin x. Right? Now we have to find the ratio of del x by del, del y by del x. So I am going to divide both sides by del x. So wherein I end up with this. Now for me to find dy by dx, I need to limit this to del x to 0. Apply the limits of del x to 0, wherein I will get dy by dx. So here how do I apply my limits? Just like that when I apply, I can see that this will give me 0 by 0 form. So I need to do something to make, my, make me easy to apply the limits. So I am sure you all will remember the rules or otherwise go back to limits and continuity and learn and then get back. So this is, I have an irrational function. So let me rationalize it first. So I am going to multiply by the conjugate of the numerator by minus root of, uh, so I am going to multiply by root of sin x plus del x plus root of sin x and the denominator also by the same function. Now you can ask me that the denominator has now become irrational but that will not be a problem for you because there is a plus here. It will not make it 0. Let us see. We will understand better when we proceed with the sum. So here we have del x tends to 0. This is a minus b into a plus b leading to a rational value a square minus b square divided by del x into root of sin x plus del x minus plus root of sin x. Now again it will give you 0 by 0 only. So we have not simplified it to the right form. Let us move ahead. Now this is sorry this is sin of x plus del x minus sin x. When we square it the square root, square root gets nullified. So again this is of the form sin c minus sin d. You all know sin c minus sin d is equal to cos of 2 into cos of c plus d by 2 into sin of c minus d by 2. So let us apply that. We will get limit del x tend to 0 to cos of c plus d that is x plus del x plus x by 2 into sin of x plus del x minus x by 2 divided by del x into root of sin x plus del x plus root of sin x. So what do, I, what do I get here? Limit del x tends to 0. This is sin del x by 2. So this is 2 cos 2x plus del x by 2 into sin del x by 2 divided by del x into root of sin x plus del x, x plus del x 
into root of sin x is what we are getting. Now let me apply the limits because it is a product of two functions. So I, when I club these two by putting this 2 out here you know that sin x by x limit x tending to 0 sin x by x is going to give you a 0 give you an 1 so limit x tending to 0 sin x by x is 1 so here when i apply the limits i will split this function as product of these two And this making it easy for me to apply the limits. So, when I apply the limits here it becomes 1 into when I make del x is equal to 0, this becomes cos x because here it becomes 0. Here it becomes cos x divided by here it is root of sin x plus root of sin x because del x is apparently 0. So that is nothing but 2 root sin x. So when I differentiate root sin x, I end up in cos x by 2 root sin x. So this is how we have to differentiate when we differentiate using the first principle. Please go through the solution once again. Keep your formulae in place. Get to know the rules so that it is really easy for you to use whatever methods they are asking you to solve. Them. So we saw how complicated it is to derive using the first principle. Now here it says just differentiate the following function, find the derivative. There is nothing in specific saying asking us to apply the first principle. So we can apply the formula that we know and differentiate it, right? So let y is equal to tan square x. Now how do I differentiate this? I know that the derivative of tan x is equal to secant square x. But here it is a composite function. It is having a power, it is just not tan x, it is tan square x. So we need to apply the chain rule here. Okay, this is a power function. So first we will apply the power rule as always. So when we differentiate with respect to x, we have dy by dx is equal to first we will use the power rule. So we will bring the power down make it the coefficient and subtract 1 from the power keeping the base unaltered. This is our first step because the outermost function is a power function 2 tan x and the inner function is a the base is a trigonometric function. So tan x on differentiation gives me secant square x. So into the derivative of the trigonometric function that is secant square x. So when I write this, I can write it as 2 tan x into secant square x. This is my solution. Easy, isn't it? That's all for the video. Thank you. Sairam.